Blake Edwards is the third generation of a filmmaking family. His career has spanned five decades. With successes like Breakfast at Tiffany's, 10, and the Pink Panther series, he brought his own style of comedy to Hollywood. He has worked in film and television and radio. Last year, he ventured into unknown territory, Broadway, the Great White Way. The musical version of successful farce, Victor Victoria, marked the triumphant return of Julie Andrews to the Great White Way after a nearly 30-year absence. This month, the production celebrates its year anniversary, and I'm pleased to have Blake Edwards here to talk about that. Welcome. Thank you. This, I mean, why, why did you need to do this? I mean, you didn't need the money. If you're going to make, you took a huge risk because you had to put up your own money uh, at some point because of the backers, the needing backers, one backed out or something. You don't need this. Did you do it because it was a challenge? Did you do it because it was an interesting opportunity for her? Did you do it because what? For a couple of reasons. I did need it. Uh, I seem to be always reinventing myself. Uh, I'm one of those people that is, you know, needs to work, needs to, to do. That and, may mean uh, psychic, you need for your own psychic satisfaction. Yeah, yeah. And when I originally did the film, uh, I decided almost immediately that it, it was a, a good stage vehicle. And I kept obsessing on that all the time, you know. Sooner or later, I've got to do this. Hey, the, the reasons are a lot more complicated, and you know, it would take the whole uh, afternoon to even uh, try to divine what, uh, what prompted me to do it. But the, the bottom line is that I needed to do it for me, and uh, I needed to do it for Julie, too. Why Julie? Because she was, she was getting too kind of, uh, uh, complacent isn't the word, but uh, she needed a challenge. She's one of those people that, that does best when she's uh, got to climb the mountain. Mm. Was it worth it? Mm. Yeah. Why do you say, hmm? Well, when you ask that question, the first thing that comes to mind immediately are all the negatives. What are they? <laughs> and there are plenty. Well, we really don't see that much of each other. She now lives on the top of the house that we're renting, and I live on the second floor because... You have uh, different hours? Yeah, completely different hours. I work practically all night if I'm writing, mm -hmm. and uh, she has to get her sleep. She comes home, gets home probably at 11.30, quarter of 12 by the time she gets to bed it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm just starting to write or to do whatever I'm doing so we hey, she and she needs a rest much more than I so that was a downside what else that's a downside uh, well being away from the family mm. we're very family oriented although on one hand it's been good too because we've had a chance to sort of be with ourselves more or less but uh, the whole family structure just kind of crumbled, and, and uh, we haven't been able to get back to Switzerland. We have a home in Switzerland that we love, and uh, we haven't been there in over a year. So it, it had a lot of downside to it, but it also had, well, a lot more to the downside, the uh, obvious problems of uh, critics in the right. beginning. Right. Uh, and awards. Uh, yeah, and that whole thing, although, I wasn't particularly surprised by that. Uh, it, it created a lot of problems for her, and uh, not knowing how to handle it. Uh, would you do it over? Yeah. Yes, I would. Why? Because I love it here. In it, New York, or love it on uh, in the theater? Both. 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 I, I don't know whether I can actually separate the two. I would hate to, to live in New York and uh, not be working. That would... Much rather be back in California, but uh, if I wasn't working. But there's a, I had heard about it before, and I thought, well, it, that's pretty cliche by now. The, uh, the energy of New York, and I absolutely believe it. You started that as a writer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, first of all, you, because of your mother, you had access to film lots. I mean, you were hanging around as a teenager. That's right. Right. Yeah. You started writing. Yeah. You know, and Breakfast at Tiffany's was the first big thing. Yes. And that was huge. 
Uh, Trevor Capote's book. It wasn't that huge at the time. Oh, it's now huge. You know, yeah, Audrey Hepburn. Now it is. Yeah. Was that when we fell in love with Audrey Hepburn? I think so. Like we fell in love with Julie in Sound of Music, I guess. Or, the Sound of Music came before Camelot, I don't remember. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Sound of Music when we fell in love with Julie. Yeah. And then Breakfast at Tiffany's we fell in love with Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. They are. And they there was a time in your life you fled Hollywood. And yeah. just said to hell with it, I don't want to be here and you people yeah. stink. Right? Yeah, I was uh, really uh, licking my wounds at that point. I, mm -hmm. I wasn't... Uh, you were angry, disillusioned. Yeah, hurt. Hurt? Yeah, hurt. Hurt. Hurt a lot. It really did, yeah. Now, what precipitated that? There were two rather important uh, films that got in the way of that mess, uh, major train wrecks, and just uh, one was one that was very near and dear to my heart, and the other one was uh, uh, something that involved my wife, which was very near and dear to my heart at that time, too. Okay. That was a thing called Darling Lily. Oh, yeah, you made that. Yeah, and... Uh, it was a catastrophe, and I just finally said, I can't deal with this. I really can't. Why was it a catastrophe? Oh, that, that's... Too painful, too complicated? Well, it's, it's too complicated. Yeah. It's both, but it's much too complicated. Boy, this stuff really gets to you. It did then. Yeah. So you left Hollywood yeah. and went to Switzerland or where? Yes, I went to Switzerland and said, that's it. I'm just going to write, and uh, nobody can do much about that. They either like it or they don't. They either buy it or they don't. Yeah. And I don't have any bosses but myself. But I found out that I really did because Julie kept saying, it's, you know better. You're, yeah. <laughs> it'll, you'll, you'll get some rest and you'll go back. What don't we know or understand or appreciate about Julie Andrews? Uh, you know, I, I, I say so at the risk of really sounding like just another fan. She is a, a remarkable human being. She really, truly is. Her failings are fun. There's nothing really <laughs> disastrous about them. Uh, I, I've never, uh, uh, as long as we've been married, I've never really found anything that I truly didn't like about her. The I mean, this is, that, for you, this is made in heaven. Yeah. yeah. The, the, you know, the things that, that anger the hell out of me because they're so yeah. diametrically opposed to my M.O. Yeah. But always uh, I find myself sort of inwardly smiling when she does that. I remember one time I, I was really campaigning to get her to stand up for her rights and speak out more and, and, and not be a victim so much. And, and uh, we were in Switzerland, and she took off on me for the first time I'd ever seen, and really laced Ripped me up. Her? Yeah, oh boy, she gave it to me. What'd she say? Uh, I don't remember the bit. words. I can remember the sound and you the music and all of whom. Yeah. yeah, and that, it, uh, I started to laugh. I mean, genuinely, I thought, <laughs> what have I created here? What is this? And then she really got mad. She said, you've been after me for years to stand up for what I believe in and now I'm standing up and you're you're laughing, laughing at, at me. me. Yeah. yeah. You're making fun of me doing making it. Making fun of me doing it. And so then you made Pink Panther and made you rich and happy and, and yeah. or not happy because we established you've never been happy. Well, I've been happy, but, but, sure. Well, but it's not. relative for you. Yeah. And Julie and the back to the Tony thing. Now was that her standing up? Was that you standing up or was that you know you said it was I her we, standing we don't want you Tony, thank you very much, because you didn't give enough respect to the rest of our crew. And she we don't talked like the way to me you about think. it. She said uh, I can't reconcile this. She said, I don't think anybody, I don't care what they think about my ability, I don't think anybody can get up there without the proper material, without the proper support from their yeah. actors, uh, and uh, do something that they deserve a, a Tony nomination, but nobody else does. And she yeah. said, in this show, I know what this show is all about, you know, and it's about a... a Oh, family and people supporting each other and hard work and all of those things. And I said, well, you know, what are you going to do about it? She said, well, I, I can't bring myself to accept this, so I think I'll decline. And then we discussed how it was best to do it. You can make any more films? Oh, yeah, I hope to uh, make one this coming summer, which really is uh, about the last four years of my life prior to doing Victor Victoria sort of loosely based, no, more than loosely based, it really is. It's very much like SOB in, yeah. 
in that kind of Satire iconoclastic, on yeah. But this is going to be what? about what, what is it about the last four years of your life that's worth me going to the movie to watch? Well, uh, I don't know uh, whether it's worth you going to the movie. I never think about that because if you, that's a bad game I know, to play. It, 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 whether it's interesting you know, to you. Yeah, well, it's about that's uh, the, first test. the death of my parents, the death of her parents, right. all in a matter of a year's time. Uh, the t tremendous uh, problems that we had with uh, uh, two of our adopted kids, uh, it, it, the, the fact that uh, all of that, the influence it had on our particular lives, uh, it was maybe the most painful, yet potentially funny, mm. uh, funniest uh, four years that I've ever been through. I mean, we had one kid over here in the valley who was uh, in a locked facility, and we had one kid over here on the other side of the mountain in a locked facility at one time both in the same hospital, one in the psychiatric ward and the other in, in a, a large sort of wonderful hospital suite, which I didn't want, but that's all they had. And they figured, well, it's Julie Andrews' kid, so we'll put her in there. And they're watching each other, looking at each other out of the window and mooning each other, you know, in this crazy world. And uh, it, it, there was just it, four years of madness where we would forget what day it was, whether we should be in this facility or that facility. And one night we had to be in both places a couple of hours apart and got lost in the valley. Oh Madness. Is this a tragedy or a comedy? We're gonna it's be a saying. comedy, yeah. but it's very tragic, too, yeah. because it talks about older folks and geriatric problems right. and things like that and, and dying and death and mortality. And uh, then I improvised some stuff that wasn't true just to give it yeah. More of a plot. Great to see you here. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Blake Edward, Victor Victoria, celebrating its first anniversary. As we go out, thanks for joining us. Take a look at this clip. We'll see you tomorrow night. Take care. Still when there's that rhythm